Okay, so first I would like to thank Boris uh, Kim. I would like to thank Kim and, um, for the invitation, even though it's an uh, I mean, uh, obligation. Okay, so today I want to talk about the, uh, the Higgs couplings with the W and Z bosons. Okay, so as we know that the standard Higgs boson has provided an elegant and, and uh, a beautiful way to break the electric symmetry. And, uh, but it doesn't forbid us to consider an extended Higgs sector. And other than the like, gauge symmetries and Lorentz symmetries, um, there's actually no guiding principles about how to construct such an extended Higgs sector. Um, for example, you, you can use other representations. You can include more representations and uh, um, an arbitrary number of, maybe arbitrary number of uh, uh, such representations in your Higgs sector. And maybe uh, there is even additional symmetries in, in this uh, uh, Higgs sector. And sometimes it's required by the uh, new physics. For example, you want to get mass to neutrinos or, or supersymmetry and so on. Um, so in such cases, one thing that will be modified is the coupling of the Higgs with the weak uh, gauge bosons. Um, because they can uh, receive mass contributions from different representations. And what is uh, uh, interesting here is that the coupling may be either enhanced or weakened uh, in this case. So here is uh, what we learned from the uh, RHC 11 And on the left hand side, um, uh, here um, uh, they, they tell us uh, that this uh, so-called scale factor, the kappa factors for uh, various uh, uh, particles. But on the left-hand side, they assume that the kappa B, namely the, the Higgs coupling with the W and Z bosons, to be less than or equal to one, and they assume that uh, the Beyond-Stan model branching ratio of the Higgs could be uh, greater than zero. So that is the assumption uh, for the left-hand side, and uh, for the right-hand side. Uh, the only assumption is that the beyond standard model branch ratio is zero. And you can see that for the kappa z and the kappa w, the first two entries, uh, they have this uh, two-fold ambiguity. In other words, uh, in addition to the uh, uh, solution around the positive one, there's also a solution around the minus one. Oh, by the way, here they use the, the convention that for kappa t, the top, uh, uh, you call a coupling kappa, is defined to be positive. So uh, uh, around one, and you see that for all the other fermions uh, or even gamma, it's, it's uh, absolute value of that. So, so um, it's, it doesn't mean that it's, uh, we, we really know that it's pos around positive one. But uh, in the following, I will just concentrate on the scenario on the right hand side, namely there's no uh, the Einstein model decays of the Higgs boson. Okay. Uh, Recently, we learned from both Alice and CMS, they uh, tell us the new measurements of kappa W and kappa Z. Again, here, it's just the absolute value of kappa W and Z. And uh, you see this uh, Atlas number is um, a little bit bigger than one, and CMS is like that. And here's the average uh, of the two sets of numbers. And here, for, for this talk, I just want, want you to concentrate on the central values, because the central values uh, motivates us to consider uh, the, the following two properties. The first one is that the kappa w and or kappa z could be greater than 1, as you see, if you just look at the central values. And the second is more interesting that the kappa, and w, kappa w and kappa z may be different. Okay, here, if you just look at the central values, they are different at the 10% level. So we want to ask um, what kind of Higgs sector features these two properties, and uh, the, in particular for the second one, how different can they be? Okay? So the, uh, even though, again, even though the, the, even the current of precisions, you cannot have any conclus conclusions about the, uh, these two statements, but uh, just uh, concentrate on the central values for the moment. Okay, let me remind you that uh, People have done the study showing, uh, here it shows that uh, at the high luminosity RC, here are the precisions you can reach for different kappas. In particular, for kappa Z and kappa W, uh, for the high luminosity RC, you can reach like just a few percent level, the precision. And uh, with ILC, you can further go down to sub percent level. Okay, so it is possible that uh, uh, in the 
future with high luminosity LC or even ILC, we can uh, uh, make precision measurements of these two uh, quantities and therefore we can tell whether they are really different or not. Okay, and as you know that uh, when you do the uh, model building, there's always this uh, uh, constraint from the role parameter, which is basically one, and uh, there's also a well-known formula uh, for the role parameter at the tree level. So uh, if, if, just you, if you just add one additional uh, Higgs representation, then it is well known that there are the following uh, infinite number of solutions. For example, this one, so here the numbers are under the SU2 and the U11. So this one is you add a real singlet, and the second one is if you add a, a, a doublet, another doublet to the uh, Higgs sector, and so on and so forth. But there's also another possibility is you add a custodial uh, symmetrical representation here, and, and the, the two numbers are under SU2 left and SU2 right. Um, so it can be uh, any positive integers, and that's uh, if and, and if n is 1, that's the real singlet case. If n is 2, that's the doublet case. And uh, above 3, that's the, the generalized uh, George M. Hachet model. Okay. So here I list the simplest uh, three cases. Um, the, if you add a real singlet, if you add a doublet, and then if, you add a, 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 if you consider the George M. Hachet model, and here are the uh, neutral Higgs bosons in, in these models. And immediately you see that for the first two kinds of models, the kappa V, either W or Z, they are the same. They are suppressed by the same factor, and uh, they, they are always uh, less than or equal to 1. Another thing is that uh, uh, well, they are the same. So here uh, in the last column, I list this kappa W over kappa Z. Um, so even though for, for the exotic Higgs bosons, uh, there is no such concept of kappa, but you, you see here I just normalized uh, uh, the coupling with respect to the Sven model coupling. And for the GM model, you see because of uh, this uh, extra factor here, the whole factor can be either greater than zero or equal to, sorry, greater than one or equal to one or even smaller than one. Another thing is that uh, in this model, there's this uh, uh, neutral component in the five plot that um, you see they have different, uh, kappa W and kappa Z are uh, given by the different formula and they, you take the ratio, that's actually uh, minus one half. So uh, it is um, uh, possible to consider the, that uh, this uh, kappa W over kappa Z uh, in, in this kind of cases could be uh, different from one. And it's here it's just very significantly. All right, so well, you just you just saw that indeed it is possible that for uh, there, there's a model, Georgia Hodgkin model, uh, which allows kappa W and kappa Z to be greater than one. What about the second uh, property? Can they be different? And uh, if you look at the CMS number, as I said, that's uh, the central value is differs by ten percent. So the first thing you may think about is maybe. By uh, radiative corrections, you can uh, get a, a significantly different uh, kappa W and kappa Z. And of course, that's a model, uh, uh, to answer this question, uh, it, it's model dependent. So again, we look at the, uh, those three simple uh, examples last year. So, uh, so here in this plot, the horizontal axis is kappa Z. And with the head, we just normalize this kappa z to the one loop result within the standard model. Okay? And the vertical axis is, we, we call it the delta kappa v, that, that is defined as the difference between kappa w and kappa z. And we consider two scenarios for the, at the ILC. One is the collision at the 250 GeV, and the other one is 500 GeV. And as I said, we consider three the, the three models, the real Higgs segment model and two Higgs double model, but uh, to be specific, we consider the type one. But we, we think uh, the, for the other types, the, the, basically the distribution should be roughly the same. And then uh, the Georgia Mahachek model. So uh, you, I don't know, I'm not sure whether you can see clearly. There, there are actually lighter colors and uh, darker colors. For the lighter colors, those are the, the uh, parameter space that satisfy just theoretical constraints like unitarities, stability, productivity, and oblique uh, corrections. 
And for the darker color, we further include the, uh, uh, the Higgs signal strengths uh, from row one, because at that time, that, that, that those are the only uh, available data uh, at that time. Um, so you see that uh, for, for these three kinds of models, they have different distributions. Again, um, so for the GM model, kappa z is basically uh, greater than one, sometimes a little bit smaller than one. But for the other two models, it's always less than one. But what is important here is that you see the, the difference between the two types, the kappa w and kappa z, is at, at most at 1% level or even smaller. So uh, you see that to answer the, uh, the, the previous question, uh, if you want to get a, like 10% difference in the, between the capital and capital C, it, it's definitely not from the radiative corrections, right? So we, next we consider um, adding more uh, represent, the, the, the Higgs representations. So we found that at least we need at least two active uh, Higgs multiplets larger than the doublet representation. Um, so here by active, I mean that they, oh, they, they should, uh, they, they develop back of expectation values, they contribute to the mass of the W and Z bosons. And um, you, you, it's probably easy to see that you need the representations larger than, than the doublet, because if you just add singlets, it, it, you can go through the, this uh, row, the, the tree level row parameter formula, you, you can see that it, it can never, uh, uh, um, uh, change this, uh, this uh, universal uh, suppression of cosine alpha. And likewise, uh, doublet is also impossible. So uh, you need the representations bigger, like the triplet and so on and so forth. And you need, uh, we found that you need at least two of them, because it, it, as one example, if you just add one, then it's like the GM model, Jojan Hashi model, it, it still doesn't uh, uh, defer kappa W and kappa Z. Okay, so we will, in the following, we will consider the simplest uh, case. Uh, we add two exotic representations. And here, we suppose their common numbers are uh, T1, Y1, and T2, Y2. Because um, it, it, the, the new representation could be a real representation or complex. In the case of the complex representation, the value is given by uh, V over root 2. And uh, for the real one, it's just V. That's the usual normalization. Then we found that to get a row equal to one at the tree level, the vacuum expectation values of these two representations should satisfy uh, this. It's, it's, the ratio is given by uh, their opponent numbers like this. And also we define this uh, ratio, uh, we call it R. And another constraint is that the total vacuum expectation, 246 GeV, should be the sum of, of uh, the doublet that and uh, also the exotic maps. And finally, this is uh, mixing your 10 beta is defined as the ratio of the maps like that. Okay? But, of course, it, it, with just these uh, conditions, you can, just like before, you can find a, an infinite number of uh, scenarios or solutions. So we further impose the following constraints. Uh, it is also, uh, many years ago, it is also known that if you add one exotic representation, then the SU2 quantum number cannot be greater than uh, seven halves if it's a complex scalar, and it cannot be greater than four if it's a, a real scalar. And we will use the same constraint here, even though we are considering n equal to two case. You can, you can expect that the constraint will be even stronger, but we, we keep using the same constraint just to be conservative. Um, also, uh, in some scenarios that we found, uh, the, uh, we, we also run the coupling, the, the, the electronic couplings, and we found that sometimes uh, they will develop uh, Landau poles, and well, especially for the la large uh, SU2 representations. And it turns out it's always the uh, G that develops the, the, the Landau pole uh, at a lower scale than G prime. Okay, so that's also not allowed. Uh, the third constraint is that. Uh, you can, uh, from the representations, you can write down the, the allowed, uh, in general, the uh, new interaction terms. And sometimes you will find that there's accidental global U1 symmetries. 
And since both of them, we assume that both of them participate in the electrical symmetry breaking, they develop a bad, so we don't want this kind of thing to happen, otherwise you will have number goes on both of So after imposing this constraint, we throw them away and we keep the, the rest, otherwise we don't impose any custodial symmetry in the exponential. Then we found that there are these following uh, uh, 15 scenarios. Um, here, the, the, the logic of the list is that uh, the first representation, the representation of the first uh, multiple is bigger than the second multiple. And, well, the first one, the first solution turns out to be the Georgia and Mahatri model, but without the Soviet symmetry. And this R is the R that uh, we saw a few slides before, that's basically the ratio of the two, the value of the smaller rep representation divided by the value of the larger representation. That's that, uh, that's n squared. And um, see some other parameter. And here, um, so you can, since we know this ratio, so we can, we can uh, simplify everything to the bad of the first guy. And actually, the, the bad of this first uh, representation has a maximum if we assume that the um, fermion mass comes from the doublet. And by requiring that the top you call it, which is the largest one, uh, to be perturbative, then that will give us a lower bound on the double bound, which in turn gives, gives us an upper bound on the exotic representation, uh, like an expectation value. Okay, and, and the, the largest possible representation is a septet. Um, here I just uh, tell you that for the ratio of the bats, uh, most of the cases have a larger, I mean, the, the Smaller representation has a larger vacuum expectation value than the larger representation. Okay, so um, uh, now that we have uh, 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 three neutral components, one com coming from the standard model doublet and the other com two coming from the new representations, so they were mixed to give us the physical Higgs uh, bosons, and R here is just a final rotation matrix. Um, now, since the, the new representations we add to the big sector are bigger than the doublet representation, so in this case, uh, only the stemma doublet can couple with the fermions. And therefore, we can write down the scale factor for the fermion um, like this. It's a universal factor. R11 is the 1 1 element of this rotation matrix. And this is sine beta, beta as defined before. But we rewrite that as the matrix element in terms of kappa f and the sine uh, beta. Now with this, uh, we can write that we found the analytic formulas for kappa w and kappa z. They're given by this expression. And the first part is common. That's the, 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 the one you saw before. That's just the sine beta times uh, Show you that that's just a, uh, this R11 times sine beta, and they differ in the, the uh, those two terms, uh, the last two terms. Okay, and uh, most of them are the non quantities like the quantum numbers and C is defined uh, also some function of these uh, quantum numbers. But so there's only one free parameter is theta cosine here is cosine theta. The theta is the, just some um, 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 angle that has the range from 0 to 2 pi. And if you want this custodial relation, kappa w equal to kappa z, then you can solve, you can, by requiring that, you can solve to get uh, this uh, relation tangent theta, this mixing, th this angle has to be a special angle that is given by minus square root of the, the ratio of the mass. Okay. So, so like the, sim the simple GM model satisfy this property. Okay, and then, well, um, okay, so here we, we take the first scenario, the, the GM model without custodial symmetry, as an example, an explicit example. This horizontal axis is kappa z, and here's kappa, kappa w. Um, so we can see here we have two sets of curves. One is given by solid curves, the other is given by uh, the dashed curves. And the solid curves are for uh, kappa f equal to 1. In other words, it's standard model-like, the standard model limit. And uh, the dashed one is for kappa f equal to 0.9, so slightly less than the standard model value. 
And from inner curves to outer curves, uh, they correspond to the exotic event being 10 GeV or 20 or 40 GeV. And this purple cross here is, is the uh, experimental average of the two measurements that I showed you before. So we want our curves to fall inside of this uh, one sigma region, right? Um, also, we have this, uh, this uh, uh, lighter gray uh, band. So the darker gray band is when their difference is less than 5%, and the lighter gray band is when the difference is 10%. Um, so you see that uh, if, if I take this uh, solid curves as an example, the, uh, this, this, this V1, the VAB, cannot be too large, because you can imagine this, uh, if it's too large, the ellipse will go outside uh, this, this uh, lot, the one sigma region. So then that means there's no solution to explain the data at one sigma level, for example. So we get, um, by varying this kappa f, we then get this, uh, the lower plot. So here kappa f is equal to one. In this case, the v1 could be zero or up to some value. Uh, but if you go away from the standard model limit, then you see in general there is an upper and a lower bound on the exotic map. It cannot be smaller than a certain value. Okay? And, and it's asymmetric. So if, if kappa f is uh, bigger than 1, you see that the, the band is uh, narrower than if it's less than 1. So uh, you see that indeed it is possible to get very different um, Kappa W, uh, it's possible for Kappa W and Kappa Z to be uh, different. Um, and all, for all those scenarios that I listed, their curves are basically tilted like this way. The, the, the ellipses are, are this kind of just the, for the different scenarios, they may tilt a, a slightly different. Otherwise, it, it's all like this. Okay, so next I want to consider, uh, discuss how we can determine this ratio. And here, uh, it, it's not necessarily the standard model Higgs in general. We, we consider the general case any neutral Higgs boson coupling with the W and Z. And we define this ratio uh, to, to call it uh, lambda W Z. And of course, in the standard model, it's, it's plus one. But we saw that in the GM model, if it's the five plate, then it's minus one half. Um, you already saw this before. We have two fold ambiguity uh, currently. And here are the uh, expected precisions at the high velocity average C. So we expect that this, the measurement of this uh, lambda uh, prime, the ratio, uh, is less than about the 6%. But uh, from the high velocity average C, you can only determine the absolute values. You cannot determine the sign of lambda, right? So to determine the sign of lambda, this group of people, uh, a couple of years ago, they proposed to look at the Higgs decay into a pair of uh, Z bosons and then the decay into four leptons. The reason is that at the tree level, you can have a H to ZZ coupling, and then uh, at one loop level, you can consider the W loop, then you, can have, you have the HWW coupling. Then by interfering the tree diagrams and the uh, loop diagram, you, you can um, uh, figure out the, the relative sign between uh, kappa W and kappa Z. But of course, this uh, involves loop calculation. It's more, uh, at least technically, more involved. And instead, we consider a simple, conceptually a simpler scenario by looking at this uh, E plus E minus collision to WWH in the final state. Then you can see there are uh, these three diagrams. They're all three level diagrams. And the, the left two, involves the HWW couplings and the uh, coupling, and, and here it involves HZZ coupling. So when you uh, sum them up and square it, you will get contributions from here, we call it the sigma W, and contribution purely from this diagram, we call it the sigma Z, and then you have interference between the two, we call it the sigma WZ. And in front, you have these coefficients, lambda WZ, like that. Here we factor out is uh, kappa w squared. Um, again, uh, later on we will just, even though this method can be applied to uh, a general uh, neutral expose of the, in the following, I will just concentrate on 125 GE as an example. Okay, so, um, so 
In this plot, we, we plot the cross-section as a function of the collision energy. And we found that um, if we use unpolarized uh, electron-positive collisions, then we get this uh, curve. But if it's polarized like this, then we get this kind of curve. And you see that the cross-section reaches the next month uh, around the 500 GeV. So uh, we will uh, stick to the 500 GeV IOC with this polarization in, in the following analysis. And again, um, here is the formula for the production cross-section. And if we assume the luminosity to be uh, 4 inverse eta bond, then we found that the cross-section, this W part is is about one order of mag sorry one order of magnitude uh, bigger than the z part, and th this interference term has a negative sign here. It's between these uh, the magnitude is between these two, but uh, with a minus sign. So if lambda is positive, there is a destructive interference between the w diagrams and the z diagram. <coughs> and here in this plot we show. That the vertical axis is the uh, significance of the signal, and the horizontal axis is the required luminosity. And here we consider three uh, um, um, different scenarios. The first one is standard model scenario. The second one is uh, that they have the opposite sign. Okay? And the third scenario is when we turn off the, the kappa z. Right? And you see that for the standard model scenario, that's the, the red curve, the required luminosity generally is high, to reach the same significance is generally higher than the other two. And this is because of the destructive interference. So you need um, uh, um, uh, larger luminosities to produce the required uh, e number of events. Um, and uh, uh, in the case of the, big, the second scenario, it's the blue curve, it, it, because of the relative minus sign. So, so you, you, uh, you need a smaller luminosity to, to reach the same significance. Okay, so, so oh, I did mention. So here, uh, we consider the final states where the that one of the Ws will decay electronically and the other one decay uh, hydronically, and the Higgs boson decay to the BD bar final states. But in our paper, we also consider the Higgs decay to WW. Um, the, 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 it's qualitatively uh, similar to what we have here. Okay, and now in this plot, it shows the horizontal axis is the magnitude of kappa w, and the vertical axis is this lambda prime, the lambda wz, and the curves are the contours to give us the, uh, the uh, 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 constant uh, uh, significance. Here we fix the velocity at the 4 inverse eta bar. So as long as kappa w is greater than 0 0.6, you see that we can um, always get more than uh, five sigma significance. And especially within this range, when lambda is roughly, the magnitude of lambda is less than 0.4, then um, uh, you see that the required uh, the, the, uh, the significance is, is easily reached. That's, that's because when this parameter is small, remember we, we here we fix uh, kappa w, so when this parameter is small, that means uh, the the uh, uh, kappa z becomes large because that's the ratio of kappa w over kappa z. So that, that's why uh, it's easier to, to reach the required luminosity. Okay, so, so using this method, since because of this interference, uh, we can, by measuring uh, the cross section from total, just the total cross section measurement, you don't need to do any fancy angular analysis like the, the method proposed by Chen and all. Just to measure, by measuring the total cross-section, you can determine uh, uh, with sufficient, of course, with sufficient luminosity, you can determine the sign, the mag both the magnitude and sign of lambda wz. Therefore, uh, you can determine uh, kappa w and kappa z individually, including the sign. And right now, we're considering a similar process at the LHC. OK, here is the summary. So uh, we know that. Uh, the knowledge about the kappa W and kappa zero is very important for us to understand the Higgs sector. And uh, 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 inspired by current uh, RFC data, we uh, consider uh, just looking at the central values, we, we observe some non-standard behavior of kappa W and kappa Z. Namely, they could be greater than one and they could be diff significantly different from each other. So I showed you um, we exhaust the simplest uh, uh, models that can 
uh, satisfy both features and we even give you the quantitative predictions about uh, the, the, uh, the values of those two. And, and, and the second part I, I uh, told you that, uh, how experimentally at the ILC we can uh, determine both the magnitude and the relative sign of kappa W and Z. And we are studying the RC uh, possibility. Thank you. Thank you. I was trying to get a sense of anything, what, what is sort of generic. Mm -hmm. uh, if you would find with, with high confidence that they're both greater than one, um, you, you show that it could be greater than one. Yes. But um, is there anything that, that it implies that they are greater than one about what the extended Higgs sector has to be, or is it just sort of telling you some details about the couplings? I guess that was. Yeah. Sorry, did, did you say you so, so you say it could be greater than one, or right. it could be greater than one, or they could be different from each other. Right. And, and so they are, simultaneously, both are greater than one and different from each other. From each other. Yeah. And so once you know that, does that tell you anything about which particular extensions have to be there? You've been rather... Generic. Oh, um, so you saw that we missed uh, uh, 15 scenarios, and that's when you just add two exotic representations. So I'm not saying that you can, uh, so by just knowing the measurements, even if you can uh, make a very precise measurements of both kappa W and kappa Z, there are still 15, basically I think, uh, 15 possibilities. But we, uh, if you stick to any particular scenario, what you can learn is, because this curve, as I said, involves a, a mixing parameter theta. So at least you can fix that data for each scenario, and then from there you can infer like implications. You can use that to calculate other quantities, but you cannot say that step because you have only two pieces of information. You cannot. It's impossible to to tell you which particular model it is uh, that is correct. Yeah. But definitely not the standard model. On, the, on that note, um, I thought with, there's some general argument I think that Ian and Ricardo had made about if it's if it's greater than one, then there's a, du a doubly charged Higgs um, in this in the spectrum, and you could you can understand that from unitarity violation in terms of same sign W scattering. I think, mm -hmm. and then it gets unitarized by a doubly charged Higgs. Is is that generic? In um. So you see that this, even the simplest scenario, we, we yeah, this is just the George Mahachan model, and indeed there's doubly charged exposal. Not to mention uh, if you go to higher representations. A question about the uh, Georgia Mahachan model is uh, very sensitive to the cutoff scale. The, so in this. What, what, sorry, what cutoff scale? No, you do a cutoff uh, this model. They, Oh, you mean that? Uh -huh, uh -huh. We did we didn't check that. As I said, we just considered those uh, constraints that I mentioned, but not uh, sensitive of, of the quadratic versions. Okay. Thanks, uh, thanks, uh, again, and put on the last.